I am a Jesuit, priest, and then a scientist in that order. To be paying attention to that relation between science and faith. You will be able to find God in your work if you, you are totally engaged in that work. Welcome to Jisa Meets. Our guest today is Jesuit, priest, and astronomer, Father Jean-Baptiste Kikwaya Iluo of the Vatican Observatory. So Jean-Baptiste, um, welcome to South Africa and welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Um, we're very happy to have you here and we're very happy to have you here on this episode of Jisa Meets. It's really my pleasure. Could you introduce yourself, um, tell us a bit about who you are and, uh, and what you do? So I'm uh, uh, Father Jean-Baptiste Kikwaya Iluo. As I like to say, so I am a Jesuit priest and then a scientist in that order, really. Mm -hmm. Jesuit priest and then and scientist. scientist mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Jesuit, I've been a Jesuit for 40 years now. So I entered the society in 1984, so 40 years. And then I'm a priest for 25 years. So I celebrated a uh, 25th fifth uh, anniversary of my priesthood last year because I was ordained in 1998. Mm. And then I'm a scientist. As a scientist, so I work for the Vatican Observatory and uh, I am actually based in uh, Tucson, Arizona in the uh, United States. So, so tell me, how did you find yourself doing that kind of work? Yeah, I mean, it's a, a very interesting because it's something really I, I love to do. Mm. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, like uh, I, I like to really emphasize it all the time. It's a mission. It's a mission given to me by uh, the Society uh, of Jesus. And then because it's a mission, so that means, you know, the goal of mission in the society is one thing is to for saving souls mm -hmm. so i try actually in that work you know to do my uh, that mission given to me by the society in trying actually to reach that point you know uh, where i can uh, save souls mm -hmm. so starting you know, obviously by my own soul according to the, you know, the spiritual exercises in a uh, principle and in the foundations. So save souls, my soul, and then eventually, you know, other people's souls. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, that's beautiful. Mm. Uh, how many people find kind of a conflict between faith and science? You, you're talking about um, doing science, doing astronomy, kind of as a way of, uh, as a means to salvation. So how, how, do you, how do you kind of find that integration between faith and science. How does um, your work as a scientist um, bring kind of salvation um, to people? To people, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that, uh, you know, so once more spiritual exercises, you know, in the second uh, week of spiritual exercises, we are asked actually to uh, know God uh, personally, mm -hmm. to know Jesus personally. Mm -hmm. So the entire week you need actually to familiarize yourself, familiarize yourself with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, so I do my work, so I try also to you know have the same approach to familiarize myself with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then it is only when I get to that point, I get you know to that point. And then I started now to make connections with the world and with the people mm. and then with God himself. You need actually to reach that point where you, you find a kind of a unity of yourself. And then when you get that unity, you know, of uh, yourself, you bring all these people and then you find that okay, they are all related people, world and then God. Mm -hmm. in my mission mm -hmm. and then from there actually you start to find joy in what you are doing. I, I believe there's an asteroid named after you. How, how, does, how, does, how does one receive that, that honor? Yeah, so the asteroid named uh, after me, of course, is very good. I'm very happy you know, to have <laughs> an asteroid named after me. But it is just, I mean, um, to recognize, you know, my work, my research. 
is uh, actually a sign of my contribution as a scientist. And then that actually uh, came from uh, my research on meteors, mm -hmm. on uh, physical properties of meteors, mm -hmm. and then mostly the density of meteors. Could, could you say a little bit about what the work, what the mission and work of the Vatican Observatory is? Mm. Yeah, so the mission and the work of the Vatican Observatory, you know, as, you know evolve, you mm. know, um, <clears throat> with time. Uh, but nowadays, actually, we work, we are doing uh, science, really, true uh, science. But the mission we have from uh, the Pope is to do science, keep doing science, you know, with uh, lay people, you know, with the world the community of scientists. But at the same time, actually, keep paying attention to that uh, relation between uh, science and the faith. So it's like to do good science, but also to keep that eye of faith. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Well, that's a beautiful yeah. work. What is it that brings you to South Africa? Yeah, so that is a very good question. So there is an organization for astronomers around the world called I. AU, International Astronomical Union. Mm -hmm. So it is an organization putting together, you know, all astronomers around the world. And then uh, it was founded in 1999. Uh, we gather, you know, uh, once every three years. And then we had actually meetings, you know, uh, of that organization in uh, Europe, of course, in the United States, in Asia, in uh, South America, even in Argentina, in Brazil. And then that was the first time ever that we had that meeting in Africa and then in South Africa. So I'm here to attend that meeting. This is a very important region. So I'm an African myself. And then we fought really hard to bring that uh, gathering here in Africa. So I'm here for that. And then, of course, you know, because they are Jesuit, my brothers in the region, I said, of course, let me, you know, make a stop and then see what my brothers are doing in South Africa. What, what would you say is the state of science in Africa at the moment? You, you mentioned this was the first time that the IAU had, had met in Africa. W would you say that science is in a good place in Africa? And do you have kind of a hope or maybe a vision for, for science going forward on, on the African continent? Is it a good thing for Africa to have good science on the continent? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a very important, you know, um, to bring science in Africa and uh, get young people, you know, involved uh, in science. And then that actually was uh, one of our goals, you know, to bring young people to this uh, mm -hmm. meeting, this gathering in, in Cape Town in South Africa. And then a lot of young people, you know, show up and then we really see that, okay, so the, the, the future of science actually is there and then mm -hmm. we are we are very, very happy. And uh, you know that, I mean, um, astronomy, and usually, you know, kid uh, people, you know, young people, they want to see what they are going to, to do with astronomy. Mm. And they're going to be able to make a life, mm. to make a, you know, a living uh, with that. Uh, so we try out to me now in uh, the way of teaching astronomy, not uh, you know to embrace all these different uh, uh, sciences involved mm -hmm. in astronomy, uh, like physics, uh, mathematics, uh, biology, chemistry, mm -hmm. and uh, computer uh, sciences. Very important. Uh, so that I mean, if someone you know um, uh, graduate. Uh, so, and if he doesn't have work in astronomy, as astronomy, he can actually get himself into into physics, into mathematics, mm -hmm. uh, into chemistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a kind of a science that can help people get yeah. into other kind of sciences. Yeah, other kind of well. sciences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to someone who says we shouldn't be wasting our time looking up into the stars? We should rather be focusing on the problems we have in Africa. You know, we have so many struggles in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a very good question, and then you know they may be right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, but you, you know, and the human being um, 
uh, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have uh, material, you know, goals as uh, needs. Uh, I mean, uh, you cannot actually reduce a human being to his, uh, uh, to eating, you know, uh, things like that. A human being is bigger than that. Mm. And uh, so studying uh, astronomy, as I said, so someone will come actually to know his world. So that actually you're going to grow up with the understanding of one, of, uh, you know, of man mm. about the world. And then at that time, actually, you know, people come to realize that they are not really alone, that they are related. They know actually where they live, you know, the environment. You know, it's not only one thing. Mm. It's not only the womb, mm. but maybe, you know, other things mm. also uh, that will constitute the, you know, human needs. In, mm -hmm. uh, so, so what would you say to someone who says that there's like a conflict between faith and science? There is no conflict, of <laughs> course, to start with, uh, for two reasons. The first reason is, I mean, if someone takes time, you know, to study the history of science, and that, that one actually will come quickly to realize that science actually, you know, um, uh, um, what I can say, is born really in the context of religion. I mean, there is no way actually anything in the world, you know, at that time actually could start outside the context of, of uh, religion. The second reason, science, is about studying nature, studying reality. Mm. And then in that context of a God, so the reality actually is understood, uh, you know, either in uh, the perspective of imminence, meaning that God is present in uh, the nature, in the reality, or in the context of a, a transcendence, mm. meaning that God has created and then God now actually has pulled himself outside of nature. So in the one uh, perspective of the other, you do science in a certain way, you know, and uh, so you have to respect the presence of God in the nature that you are doing science accordingly. Or you think that actually God has created something and God is not there anymore. You know, it's beautiful actually. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and God is there anymore. And then now actually you can do whatever you want with that nature. So, you know, science actually <clears throat> brought us back, you know, to integrate God mm. in what we are doing. Where, where do you find God in your work as a, as a scientist and perhaps as a Jesuit as well? I find God in, in, in my work, really. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it is, you'll be able to find God in your work if you, you are totally engaged in that work. You know, so you do it not from outside, you know, s s sort of saying, but you do it from inside. Mm -hmm. So you come actually to connect yourself, you know, totally with your work. Mm -hmm. And then you vibrate with, uh, you know, your work. You vibrate with the subject of your research. Mm. And then it is only when you get at that point that you start now to make a connection with everything, mm. with the people, with mm -hmm. the world, and then with God, you know, uh, himself at the end. Mm. So that's, where you, that's when you really, you know, find the joy mm. in what you are doing. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It's almost like, fully engaging with what you do and doing it fully is yeah. kind of that way to finding Absolutely. God in it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And, and anybody in any line of work could, yes. could be able to do that. Absolutely. Mm. Any kind of work. Yeah. Mm. Not only astronomy, not only science or mm -hmm. mathematics, physics, but any work. Mm. And so that's why it's very important, you know, to do things deeply, <laughs> mm -hmm. not only superficially. Mm -hmm. And then think that, you know, and then the connection is not going to be made, mm -hmm. you know, to what to your surroundings. It, yeah. it comes back to that same idea that we're looking for an integrated vision, yes, yes. an integrated vision of um, what it means to be a, to a be human, a human, being. human being. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you uh, for 
coming to South Africa. Thank you for coming to visit us here at the Jesuit Institute. Mm -hmm. It's been lovely Thank to you. have you and have these conversations. There's yes. been many more conversations yes, off camera as well. Yes, yes. And um, it's been very interesting. It's been <laughs> yes. lovely to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching this episode of Gisa Meets with our guest, Father Jean-Baptiste Kekwaya Ilu.